when you're telling a story, like in a way it's, it's a kind of like remote teaching. You're kind of putting something out in the world and saying like, this is how it is. So that's, that's what, another one is like plot. People abuse plot all the time, which, which kind of bugs me because if I'm telling you a story and I, and the plot is so radically disconnected from how things really work, I'm not talking about science fiction, but even within science fiction, if I posit to you, like, here's, here are the set of rules of this story and then I break them. I think that's really irresponsible because it's fucking with people's heads. It's like mm. making them dumber in a certain way that, I mean, it would take me a while to explain, but these are the kinds of things that I think about sometimes. <laughs> no, it, it makes sense. Like you're trying to do a film that's impactful, but it's also, you, it's, it's easy to follow because you understand that this is how people behave and this is how it really go down. So Here's an example. Like if I made a movie about Iraq where you ended up feeling like really good about the war. Mm. Like a feel good movie about the war. Yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. You know, I think that's irresponsible. Not that there aren't like amazing stories of heroism and not that there aren't moments about that war to feel good about, but the overall gist of it is it, it, it like was um, uh, a catastrophe. How is it managing that when you're dealing with studios and executives and all these different people and the, you know, like they, is it difficult to get people on board with what you're trying to, to do? You're really trying to make it authentic and I don't really I Typically I haven't really messed with any of that stuff like we, we made those movies uh, Catherine Beagle and I made those movies like independently. Oh, that's nice. So we had Well, that makes it was sense. like very cowboyish, you know, I mean yeah. we had financing from From a whole bunch of different places Like we pre-sold the foreign rights and this is getting inside baseball, but we never had to deal with like a Fox or a Universal mm. or a Sony. And even when we made Zero Dark Thirty, that was financed by one person, Megan Ellison, who just wrote a check. Jesus. What a gangster. <laughs> yeah. I love Megan. Shout out to Megan. Yeah. That's a crazy move. How much did that movie cost? Uh it depends how you if it depends if you include the production budget, I think it was around forty. Wow. Million dollars. And then promotion, I think she put up another 20 something. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty big Luckily money. Luckily, it worked. <laughs> I know. I lost some money. I lost a lot of her money on Detroit. So. Oh, did you? But, but she made a lot on, um, on Zero Dark Thirty. It, yeah, it's, it's interesting, like what catches and what doesn't catch in the movie world. You know, we were uh, talking the other day about The Northman, about how. Uh, it's probably one of the most realistic depictions of what it must have been like to be living as a Viking. There's no like traditional, like normal modern day superhero type people. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, everyone is like this chaotic person from history, with filled with flaws, filled with. Mm -hmm. It's 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 so realistic, but yet it didn't really do that well. It didn't. Uh, supposedly, that's what I've been told. I don't know. Really He's attention. a good filmmaker. That yeah. guy. Yes. Yeah. He's a serious filmmaker. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it comes down to scale. I don't know what the budget of that movie was, but I know that it was big. Mm. So sometimes it's like, I think about this a lot. It's like, you want to you want to spend you want to be able to get back what you spent. And the temptation is always to go bigger, but then that puts a higher expectation on the movie's performance. When you've had a series of successful films, is there um, is there ever a moment where they come to you and say, listen, what do you think about doing like a big blockbuster action movie and kind of bringing some of that? Nobody ever fucking asked me that. <laughs> no? No. They never do. I mean, I did, I, I did some like script doctoring for a while which is kind of the closest I've come to that, which was great because it was crazy good money where you come in and they're like, okay, you have a week. They pay you by the week or two weeks. Can you like give the bad guy some different lines of dialogue or mm. something like that? Or like, can you fix the third act? So I've done that. But um, 
nobody's ever said, here's our prized piece of IP. Here's like Spider-Man, whatever we're right. up to. You know, we want you to shepherd it through. No. Well, the thing is, that would be a great story for like the media. Like we've taken this guy who does these very authentic films and we've applied him to, you know. Yeah, it'd be a good story, but they don't, they don't need that. They don't want that. Like, you know what I mean? If I'm running one of those companies, I wouldn't hire me. <laughs> like you don't want to have that conversation. You're just like, dude, here's how we do it. We have a we have a playbook. Yeah. Okay, it's worked every fucking time. And we're going to do the same playbook again. And yeah. I and I'd be like, "Well, yeah, but can we change it up? And what if we made it more realistic? And what if we tried to like make it more authentic?" They'd be like, "Bro, we're selling toys." Yeah. For kids. They they are, but adults watch it too. That would be the temptation. The temptation would be Well, like, every once in a while you get like a Chris Nolan or somebody that has the in, like insane artistic chops and also like the marketplace power with a number of like to to change it up. Like the Watchmen. Yeah. Or like the Watchmen's a good example yeah. too. But like he did it with Dark Knight. Yes. But that's unusual. Yeah. And those and those systems, I mean, they're they're factories, mm. you know. So I had a hard enough time just making this at Apple. So I don't, I mean, not that they weren't great, not to talk any shit about them, but um, those are really industrial products. When you go and watch a a Marvel movie, yeah, and um, there's a limit to how much any one per any one filmmaker can or writer can really change what they're trying to do with their product so it's ultimately i mean the money is great but it's ultimately not that this is different it's, it's not that interesting yeah, it's just it's, a totally it, different it's thing totally than what different, you do kind of yeah yeah it'd be like asking a comedian to write a song yeah it's just they're both entertainment but it's just like one of them is it would be asking you to be like hey why don't we just i'll give you like double what you're making now triple what you're making now but we got to you got to just like condense this shit up, right? You got to just get to the good stuff. And you're going to have 15 minutes with each guest, mm. 10 minutes with each guest. We're going to put you on NBC. You'd be like, I don't know if you could do I'd that. Be like, how much money? You'd be like, you'd be like I'll do it. Just I might to, be able to do this. You can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, um, it is interesting. You that, might be able to, to do it, but you might not nah. be as good at it. No, That's the other it thing. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't you be know? the same thing. Yeah. There's a, there's a thing that people like at a podcast that it's a hang. It's a conversation. That's, that's what the, like the people that are listening right now, they feel like they're here with you. That's what they like about it. 